I'd now like to introduce our next speaker for today, Ian McLeod. Ian is the Director of Smart Energy at NZEN, a global business that provides knowledge sharing services for the energy and utilities industries. Prior to his role at NZEN, Ian led the transformation of Queensland's regional poles and wires business, Ergon Energy. This involved transitioning from a monopoly transporter of electricity towards an open-ended platform, open access platform model. Ian has influenced industry direction through roles as director and deputy chairman of the Energy Supply Association of Australia and chairman of the Queensland Futures Institute Energy Committee. In his presentation today, Ian will focus on practical solutions for integrating IoT into your business. I'll now hand over to Ian. All right, well, welcome everybody. I'll, uh, I'll work through my presentation as, uh, as, uh, as quickly as I can. Uh, firstly, uh, a little bit about uh, NZEN. Uh, we're about practicing knowledge, knowledge and delivering impact. Uh, and as you can see here on this actual slide, this is actually about uh, the, the black summer of bushfires in Australia. So it's not progressing on. So sustainability is in our heart. So at NZEN, we're established with a singular purpose. It's to make energy and water affordable, accessible and sustainable for all. So as I work through this presentation, you'll start to see what, what does that actually mean when we talk about IoT? The two things are very closely linked. In terms of our business, uh, we service around 255 uh, customers across the world. We've got about 4,200 uh, employees and locations in eight countries. In terms of what the business is actually structured or how we're structured, uh, we focus on business transformation. I saw a question before about uh, service design. So uh, that's fundamentally part of what we do. We actually operate some businesses. We operate a, a power company in India, a strong focus on energy and networks, order networks in terms of advisory services and services uh, to their end customers in digital. Um, we round off our portfolios with investments into uh, invested companies and NNNCO is, is one of those. Uh, Wellness Telecom is another one. You can see a number of water companies, drones. Uh, when you talk about sensing data is another source, energy efficiency and, and digital. In terms of integrating IoT into your business, um, I think key thing here is we're, we're certainly at a bit of a tipping point at the moment. Uh, and there's a lot of conversation about digital maturity. I'm uh, a member of the Edison Electric Institute and had the, uh, the privilege to join a number of meetings with utilities from all around the world. And I think what I certainly saw through that process that those that were digitally mature uh, performed better. Uh, both economically, but from also a customer service perspective. So COVID and natural disasters are driving a need for some agility, business continuity, uh, people wanting remote access and control. If half my workforce is working from home, how do I continue my business? Uh, how do I track my assets, equipment, uh, my materials? How can I see the supply chain visibility? So uh, when disasters would hit, would hit Ergon, we bring some, in it, some generators up from Energex. I remember many times wondering where they were on the highway on the way up as I was sitting in a town waiting or watching um, good food being thrown out from supermarkets. People proximity tracking and health monitoring. So uh, some big projects going on in Australia at the moment. Uh, we've got uh, increased COVID in Victoria. So how do we mitigate that risk? Government community infrastructure and stimulus, uh, business community efficiency and innovation. We've also got the issue though of scarcity. Uh, we've been through a drought, uh, so that's a bigger issue for us. How do we manage our water better? Security, for anyone who knows the power industry or reads the paper just about every day, will note that the energy security is becoming an issue. It's not so much uh, energy as a commodity anymore. There's uh, quite a bit around for, uh, of that commodity around. It's, it's getting more so around, well, what are the services to support the networks? Passive and active management, uh, the responsibilities of customers are coming on. How do we host more renewables? 
Uh, in terms of success uh, for IoT, it's really a product of a, a number of things. Um, we heard from Ian before how he's uh, integrating IoT into his business at the Gold Coast. And it did start with uh, some vision and strategy of where they, where they want to go. It, it takes leadership and engagement. It can't be managed in a cell somewhere off in the business. You need to develop knowledge and capability. There are new skills like uh, data scientists. You need good design. At the end of the day, if you don't design your network and your data layers, your visualization, uh, your, your end to end processes right, then you're not going to get the benefits. And we've talked about scope and scale. If we can do all those sorts of things, then the benefits will be delivered. So in terms of vision and strategy, uh, I guess I'm a, I'm a fan of a long-term strategy uh, and certainly at Ergon in 2007, we set a strategy up to 2020. Uh, and a cornerstone of that strategy was empowered customers by 2020. They should be able to select whether they had batteries or they should be able to select whether they had solar, what tariffs they were on, what retailers they used. Uh, and we worked towards those strategies. Part of it was also, uh, modernising the network, because the network was built for a system in the past, not for today. So the same is true for IoT. You know, what is my longer term strategy in this space? What does a pandemic look like in 10 years or the next major bushfire or the next cyclone? And how do I deal with that? Um, so enterprise strategy, you really need to know where the enterprise strategy is going, get all the inputs. What's happening, well, that feeds into your digital transformation strategy. How do I enable the business through digitization and digital capability? Uh, again, I'll use the example in Ergon, we uh, digitized uh, in terms of creating a virtual 3D digital world or the network. That's been happening for probably about seven years now. Uh, and that resulted in $40 million annual cost savings in terms of digitization. It certainly reduced uh, response times for disasters. We need to build our IoT strategy and create the roadmap. From a leadership and engagement perspective, it's a social and economic value that we've got to think about here. It's not just the business. It's uh, how am I going to impact the communities I serve? How can I make the economy more resilient? How can I promote growth? We need to ensure that the horizontal and vertical ownership is there within the business. And from that, I mean from board to the front line and right across the executive uh, team at the horizontal level. It can't be a self. We need to collaborate, communicate, engage, democratise the data and knowledge, and use the agility of IoT as a platform for innovation. It's wonderful when you provide these platforms for your people and set them free on it, uh, how quickly things can change and how it impacts the culture of the organisation. Need to understand the real cost, IoT for SCADA, for example. It's not just the purchase cost of the, the kit, it's uh, the engineering and the other things that sit behind it. The new operating models and consider the IoT is part of your customer and community engagement strategy. So if you're a council and you want to connect with your community more, whether be it agricultural or be it within a city, how can you use uh, an IoT model to do that? Uh, in terms of uh, knowledge and capability, when you do a strategy, you need to know, well, how can I deliver that strategy? What are the data requirements I need? Now, I've seen many businesses collect data they don't actually need and not collect data that they do. Um, so take it back to your strategy. Look at how do I execute this strategy? What intelligence do I need to do that? How do I capture that? Uh, learn from others. So uh, um, Ian's a great guy, Ian Hatton. I'm sure he'll put his hand out to uh, share information with others. Uh, in our industry, in the power industry, in the water industry, I've seen so many trials done so many times over in, in the years, whereas in some cases it would be simply better just to have an open and collaborative relationship and learn from others. Engage a system integration, greater and business transformation partner and develop internal capabilities for IoT and operational expertise. Design's important. The open standards, the carrier grade, the cyber security, the IoT enterprise data layer, it's gotta be interoperable. Multi-tenanted capability, 
needs to be able to control and multicast to, uh, to things like demand management in this, this new grid that we have today with all the renewables. We need to be able to switch things on, switch things off. Um, choose a suitable business model. Is it IAT as a service or as an infrastructure partnership? And the, uh, and the network architecture will be uh, what's, what's the technology that's suitable for the service to be provided. So success requires scope and scale. So access all the business internal applications. Now, I'm not saying you do that straight away. I advocate Ian's approach is right. Uh, look at where you can apply this, look at where you grow, build the support. Uh, but you need to understand what the overall benefit is. So many times I see a business, we talk to one executive or senior management who looks at one case, and from that one case, we'll make a decision on whether this is for them or not. Um, they're only taking part of the pie. Consider services to your customers and third parties, leverage the energy and water nexus. And look, that's important because one of the biggest, in terms of sustainable funding to make your city smart, make your community smart, make your enterprise smart, it's often in the, in the space of water and energy uh, that the funds are available. And being an industry type person, uh, we, I know there's been a lot of work being done on tariff reform over the years that gives the customers the ability to make those savings. But they can't be passive, they have to be active. So in terms of amplifying values, uh, it's if we go from the top to the, uh, from, sorry, from the bottom to the top, taking the applications. Uh, We've got a, a stack there that says function, enterprise, community and environment. And as we work our way up that stack, the value increases. Um, you know, have we really taken into account that project that we're doing for asset on pre pressure censoring? What's that doing for the community and the environment? If we go across the horizontal, we're looking at utilities, local government, agriculture, transport, all the verticals. Now, if you look at, uh, how I can apply IAT strategy across there in one geographic area, for instance. If it was a water company providing services to a large area, how can I add, add value into those other verticals? And how does it benefit the community and the environment? At the end of the day, if we do that, the economic and social resilience and growth will occur. And I'll finish this uh, with this slide, uh, because as a person who's been through many disasters, uh, when I say natural disasters uh, over the years, um, I do think we can lift our game and do a lot more to help the community. So here's an example of how IoT and how other sensing, being spatial sensing in the same sort of model, bring it together into a data layer, bringing into that data layer public data, enterprise data, creating the, the tools to visualise and analyse, and in this case, we're looking at floods and, and fires, those sorts of things, and how do we respond? And then how do we take all that to create a more resilient society? We spend 4% on resiliency, 96% on recovery. We need to change that. So when we look at sense, model, analyse, respond, transform, how do we develop a smart solution for disaster response? How do we do it for COVID? And how do we do it for all the other problems and opportunities we have out there? I'll finish it there, thank you. Excellent, thank you so much for that, Ian. Really appreciate it.